Hello my peeps. It is Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. I am here for What's Up Wednesday. But it's actually Tuesday right now as I record this because Wednesday is my nephew's birthday or more importantly my half birthday. That's an inside joke between the two of us. Um, so I am uh, doing this early so that I can go have dinner with him. What is up this Wednesday? Well, let me tell you. First off, today, which you would have got advance notice of yesterday if you were in my newsletter. Um, I'm going to confuse myself by the time I get the whole today is Wednesday, tomorrow is the whole thing figured out. But um, is a one-day stamp sale. 19th of July, Wednesday, the day you should be watching this video. Um, all of the stamp sets in the annual catalog, with the exception of the two host sets, host sets that are way at the back, um, are on 15% off. This is awesome because it basically saves you the shipping and GST. So I have a list of stamps that I'm like, oh, I, do, I want, but do I need? I want, but do I need? And every time they go on sale, I was like, okay, which one are we getting today? Or two or three. So I will be putting in a group order tomorrow night when I get back. Or tonight, sorry, Wednesday, tonight. See, I knew I wouldn't be able to get through the whole thing without getting confusing myself. Wednesday, the 19th of July, at about, I don't know, 9 o'clock at night. Um, the sale runs till 11.30, so we're good. I will be putting in a group order. So if you'd like to get in on some shared shipping and then do the pickup meetup kind of thing afterwards, there you go. Um, I did post my uh, store link in the newsletter if you're looking for that. And I will actually, I think I will post this on my Facebook with the store link again tonight or again. Oh, goodness. I would have done it again Tuesday night. I just as I'm recording this Tuesday afternoon, decided I would do it. So you should have seen it last night. <laughs> Okay, enough trying to keep the day straight. It's never going to happen. Um, let's just keep in general terms. For the month of July, it's bonus days. For every $60 you spend, and yes, even if it's on sale or on the clearance rack or online exclusives, whatever you buy, for every $60 you spend, you get a $6 coupon. Save the email that you get sent, or if you buy through me that I send you afterwards, because Stampin' Up! will send them to me then. Um... Because in August, I'm going to send you a reminder saying, hey, now's the time to use your coupons. And then you can use them between August 1st and 31st. So not only can you get 15% off, but depending how much you buy, you get bonus coupons. Win, win, win. Um, I posted about the online exclusives last week in one of my videos I was talking about them. Plus, uh, it was in my newsletter on Tuesday morning. If you are looking for any of the things that are out of stock, let me know. Because I pretty much look at the Stampin' Up! site every day. And if I know somebody is waiting for something, maybe even more. Sometimes on my own, maybe even more. So I can keep an eye out for those things, if that's the case. Um, but yeah, online exclusives. They come in, they go. We never know. Um, they are fun, though. I got the trucks yesterday. I get the trucks Monday. Um, as I sit here, I'm hoping I can finish this video before the UPS guy shows up with four boxes of stuff and everybody's customer orders, which I will then start having out for pickup and such, or possibly drop off depending where I'm going over the like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday kind of thing, or in the mail. Uh, last thing I want to tell everybody, our Christmas extravaganza, which is on the 14th of October here in beautiful downtown Motorville is uh, just over 50% sold out. Now we will have more information next at the end of next week with the specifics of the stamp set and stuff. I think there's going to be a flurry of registrations. Um, I will tell you, over 50% of the seats for the in-person part are sold out. The boxes, like you can get it in a box mailed to you or to go. That one we've got a little more flexibility with, but the number of seats in the room, yeah, just over 50% sold out. Now, what else is up on Wednesday? Well, in this case, Paper Pumpkin, <laughs> and why, you ask? Oh, because I was so giddy when I found this. Okay, I, and I have shown great restraint because I actually got this last night. Now, I couldn't not open the parcel when I got it because I was just too excited to see what it looked like. But other than opening the package and kind of sorting these a little bit, I didn't do anything with this. I'm going to put it together for you today, like one of each card, because I don't think you get the full effect of how cute and how nice these cards are unless they're put together. The other thing I will tell you, and the reason we're doing this today, 
is the first Monday after the 21st is when I will know if there's refill kits or any leftover full kits that will go for sale that are available for purchase. That means the Monday that's coming up. So I'm going to show you this kit because if all of a sudden you look and went, oh, I should have got me one, two, ten of those, let me know right away. I will watch for it. The second they go up, I will get them. Because the paper pumpkin kits, especially once people have seen the kit and they realize how awesome it is, and it's exactly what they want, they go fast. So here, I told you it was bright and summery and fun. Look at this bad boy. Whoa! Look at those. Are those not fun? Oh, now here's the other thing though. Do you remember I told you they were fun folds? And this is why you can't get the full mm, just beauty of the whole thing. I can't get them out of the box. Um, you can't get the, the gist of the whole thing um, unless you see them in person. So let's put our adhesives. We got some adhesives. Uh, these are little uh, sequins, see-through sequins, that's what I was trying to say, uh, that are already self-adhesive, which makes them self-adhesive see-through sequins and go Tracy. Um, okay, <laughs> then we have the stamp set. So, because it doesn't read very well there. Okay, so you can see the two images and it's got nice fun writing. It's, um, I figured this out when, oh, I gotta post my funny video. Or my funny picture of my son, my IT department, helping me yesterday with the camera. We've figured out that if it if it uh, if you can see stuff behind my hand on the desk, it has trouble focusing. That was the answer. Um, but he he was as he was helping me, he leaned over the camera to show me something, and I got a picture of it, and it was the funniest thing. I he didn't think it was so funny. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, anyways, very simple font. Love the font. So and they're all kind of ocean water themed. So waving hello um i see brighter days ahead c being sea just in case you can't see it closely there uh sending an ocean of love sorry i was crabby um hello sunshine sending sunshine to uh relax you deserve it and wish you were here and then we have a really cute sun and a starfish so that's fun and then we have the cards now, all I did, oh, we got envelopes too. Look at these colorful little envelopes with a little rainbow on them. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, no, they're the same ones. <laughs> they're just flipped over. Rainbow, bright blue, and there's like a little wave. Got them all crooked there. A little wave action going on in the envelopes. So, very fun envelopes. Okay, and then, according to the cards, we have all these die cuts, which I'm not going to show you as right off the bat. I'm going to try to sort as I go and see if I can figure out which card goes because you got to see the cards in action because they're fun folds. So you see the bases here. I'll give you a hint. The bases are cut like this. So the intent of the bases and I have to look at the pictures to remember how I'm doing this. Let me go like this. <laughs> they're all they're all scored for you so these are fun folds are a lot of fun folds look intimidating but they're actually easier to make than you would think but you know what makes them even easier to make them is when somebody does all the work for you now I, it's totally possible that i folded that backwards <laughs> okay <laughs> I know what I'm trying to do, but it's just a, let's just see if they, uh, there we go. So this is what I wanted, and this is what I should have done to begin with. Which one am I looking at? I'm looking at this one. I'll fold up my instructions so they're not flopping all over the place. This is, this is what I was trying to remember in my head. This is what you need. The little mountains and valleys. If you can see the mountains and valleys, then you can figure out what you're doing. So that's where I missed out. So... There's my big mountain. Oh, see, because it has a score line, but it doesn't appear to be scored there. It appears to be scored backwards. Okay. I know I said I was going to sort, but I'm so excited to fold that I can't sort. Let's just do 
it that way. Alrighty. Now, <laughs> keeping them the way. So now you see. <laughs> Ooh. You see how we have mountains and valleys? And now we have mountains and valleys. And yep, I did it right. So now, the card looks like this from above. So from the front, it doesn't look like much. But now, all those little things, they each go on their own layers. So then you get, like, dimensions. Ooh, I'm so looking forward to doing this. Okay, so it'll make even more sense when I focus and do it the right way. Okay, so the one I just folded there, that's one of them. I'm going to move the stamp set out to begin with because, you know, in about two seconds I will have it buried and won't be able to find it. And then we have that card. Uh, do I have room to... Uh, I don't know if I have room to leave them where you can see them. I might just have to bring them in as I go. I don't think I can get everything. We did, we did some reworking, though, and everything is now elevated, which gave me more room on my desk and made it so that the, the face cam... Um, which I just totally forgot to put on today, quite honestly, um, is not shooting a picture of me with the overhead cam directly in front of my face, which is how it was. Okay, so going back to the beginning now and looking at the pictures, the chairs, these are the die cut chairs, and I'll show you some of them as we go. They're Adirondack chairs, they go with this one. And look at that beauty little Adirondack. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. The longest sentiment. Actually, you know, I don't know if it's going to matter which sentiment goes with which. There's a, there's a longer one. This one is just slightly smaller. But I think part of it depends on what you decide you want to send on any given card. So... I think what we can do is I'll just take one of each so you can see the difference. And then, depending what you want to say on which card, <laughs> will depend on which one you use. Because I have a feeling, looking at the pictures, that any one of them will fit on any one. But those are our three different size options for sentiment. We'll just put that over there with the stamp set. And then, ooh, look at all these little things. We got crabs, flip-flops, sandals, sunglasses, starfish. So according to the chart, and this is all, do what you want with it in the end, really. According to the chart, we're going to put the starfish. I'm also thinking, um, when, the, when they do the promos for these things, they pop them out and they say, this is what's coming and this is what's coming. And it, I do remember her saying that there was extra stuff. So like looking at the card layouts, the way they've done it, they only put one starfish on each of these cards, but you'll notice there's six. Um, so hopefully there's extra stuff, and you can mix and match a little bit, um, but hopefully there's enough extra stuff that we could do whatever we want. Little crab. Some of them there is only three of. It's too bad there's not more pairs of these little flip flops. I, you know, here's, here's a fun fact about Tracy. I absolutely hate flip flops. I think they are horrible to wear. I think you trip on them. I hate the sound they make. <laughs> but... I know other people who love them. I know people who live them in them. I know people who wear them in winter in Alberta. Um, but I do think they're adorable. I just personally, nope. <laughs> okay, so these are the little, um, you know, I used to know more words, but now I can't, little, some kind of shells, the flat fan shells. They're not called fan shells, but the ones that look like little fans. I can't think what they're called. Okay, so there's that one. And then because we have all these, things to do we have layers now these cards that come like this they just look like cards but these are designed to be affixed <laughs> look at my big words to the different th these cards don't go together but like to put onto these different things so then you see different layers so look at they've cut all the layers out for us already is that not awesome okay so we have that one and I wasn't sure if they were all going to be, I love these, these, oh, these gorgeous sunset colors on here. Look at this. Um, so those two appear to go on this card. Yeah, they all bow. Oh, love it. I do love the ocean. There's another fun fact. Apparently we're having fun fact. Oh, see, I should have fun fact Friday and just tell you things. <laughs> um, and then you could tell me fun facts. I like fun facts. 
Oh, let's see. Yeah, anyways, I love the ocean. Love the ocean. Love the water. Love the fish. Love being in it. Love the sound of it. Love that it's cold and not gross like a pool. Love the ocean. Um, <laughs> those two go with that one. Just double checking as I go. So they, I see the reason I was wondering that if they sorted them is because I have three card bases, but I have four different ones of these where it has different stuff on there. So I'm, I'm wondering, um, what is the extra, <laughs> but I have just figured out what the extra is. Okay. So these surfboards, I've never been surfing. I have absolutely horrible balance. So something tells me surfing would not be a great idea, but the surfing goes with those ones. And then we have the Brawly, as the Brits like to say. The Brawly umbrella with the sand tail and such, which, and some of these are like full length layers, which gives you a hint that it probably goes on the front of the card. And then the ones that are smaller or narrower would go on the, on the steps to the side. Um, I, I'm pretty sure these are step cards like single step, double step. I think that's what they get called. If you were ever Googling to like try to make them from scratch, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. And then the one with the sand and the pail also gets those ones. Oh, look at this, this one. So, so this one, you can, you can stamp right on the sign. This, these will make more sense when I put them together. I just, this is how I do my kits. Everybody's different. I like to take every bit of the die cuts out and put them in piles and organize what goes with what so I don't get partway through and then realize yeah, I used the wrong thing for the wrong thing. So that little sign appears that you can stamp right on it. But I'm also guessing that this little rectangle here is, yes, it's also the perfect size. So you can put a little, you know me, I like my dimensionals. You can put a little dimensional to it or you could also stamp here and have this as backup. <laughs> So we have that one and then we got us some palm trees so the palm trees actually go with oh yeah see that i'm thinking like some of these cards are going to have way too much stuff on them but no they go together and why does this feel like oh it's just three i was gonna say it feels like so much more i'm just trying to pop these little sometimes it works to take them all apart at once sometimes it, it does actually work better to do it individually and I just cut my nails last night. So I have like, not that I ever have really long nails because, hey, fun fact, Tracy doesn't like long nails. They weren't really conducive to fighting forest fires and I spent most of my life doing that. And now I just, now they just bug me. But when they are freshly cut, they are super short. <laughs> I'm having a hard time with little bits and pieces. Okay, card number one. Okay, so let's do the one I've already folded because it's easier because I already folded it. So <laughs> I said, I don't, I've said this before. I don't uh, tend to read the instructions. Looking at my stuff's all, I'm, I'm having a landslide right now. Let me just move this. There's my arm that I keep showing you on screen. And one more time with the arm. Look how freckly my arm is. Squeeze. Um, I don't generally <laughs> read the instructions, but in this case, yes, the, the visual on the whole little mountains and folds is going to come in quite handy. And I think just to show you that the instructions are a good idea, I'll put them, put them kind of where you can see them. Um, I'm going to also pay attention to where they say to put things. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just creasing my little mountains and valleys here, so my card will not be quite as springy as it is right now. There we go. It's not trying to spring off the desk now. Uh, this came with parent tape in it um, because these are decorative elements and not um, the like mechanisms of the fold or anything I would assume you could also put all these different decorations on with um, your seal if you had it but we know I love tear tape so we're using the hair tape there was also I buried them but I'm pretty sure there was also glue dots in the package so I like to use my, my, like the big roll of tear and tape I keep. Yeah, I buried the other one. Um, because if I ever have somebody who's crafting with me and doesn't quite finish or doesn't get there or just needs a bit of something, I tend to give all the, the parts and pieces from the kits to them and just use my big stuff. Just in case you're wondering, there's nothing wrong with the stuff in the kit. Okay, 
So now we are going to put a, see, it only shows one strip. Now, remember when you're doing this, that the instinct might be there to, you know, secure. I'm going to get my little thing here just a minute to get a better visual. Um, the, it, the instinct might be there to, you know, put stuff here and up here. And up. these things don't have anything behind them, the surfboards. This is the only part that's going to hit card. So you can, you can dry fit. And you can look at this and go, okay, this is going to go here because that's where this actually goes. Um, and you could also decide to because if, if you really wanted to, now there's a limit to how much is going to fit through a mail slot. You could put dimensionals behind it, but you don't need to on this. you got enough dimension going here that you don't really need it on the front. But you know that that most of this is not hitting the card, right? So don't, don't go crazy with the adhesive. So it shows you to put it here, and then it shows you to put a glue dot... Sorry, I did this on purpose and then forgot what I was, forgot. I pulled it away before I was finished. Um, so it shows you to put here and then it shows you to put one glue dot on the small, the shorter of the two surfboards because this one's going to hit only partially on. But because I buried the glue dots, uh, I'm just going to put a little chunk of tear and tape there and that would be that. Uh, you know what? I don't know. It's me. Why not go backwards? I was going to say it might be easier to do it back to front instead of front to back but oh well okay so now we know that this is going on the front of the card so I'm gonna just it and it is just a little shy of the this the width of the card so I'm just kind of trying to center it a little bit there we go take my little piece there my little piece there I did not do my little uh, little trimming job and I should have because I see a couple of those little bits from the die cutting but that's okay so there we go we already have one layer on and it, as you see the one little surfboard's kind of sticking out now what I was also supposed to put on here was some sand and some I'm missing where this one went oh right up there there we go okay so I'm actually, because I'm not, I'm so not used to looking at the instructions. The instructions are not actually helping me. There we go. Because I did it twice. Okay, so these are, there's my three layers there. I just had to, if you drop this one all the way down, you can't see it and then it doesn't make any sense. But if you, if you put it there, Okay, um, I, I have no idea what this is going to do to my video. If it's going to make a big mark, and I'm really hoping it will work again. We're about to find out. But the UPS man just showed up, and if there is anybody that drives my dog nuts, it's the UPS man. He hears his truck, even if he's just driving down the road and not stopping, and he will come from a dead sleep in the other room and come racing in here. So how he missed the fact that he's across the street, like he's across the street and one house over, and the dog has not come in here like a maniac, I don't know. But I am going to pause if I can figure out how. Oh, it just says stop. I don't know if I can start again though. Darn it. That's bad timing. That's really bad timing. Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to stop. And then there's going to be a second video and I will get my IT department to help me figure out how to make it into one so you guys don't have a big break. But I do need to take a pause and this would be when all your orders arrived. Um, anybody who was waiting on one and uh, I will be back to this in just a second. And I'm back. <laughs> um, the dog is annoyed now because I foiled his attempt at getting the UPS man. He just runs into the office and then barks at the window the whole time there. Um, but because I saw him before he did because uh, he stopped far far enough back that we didn't hear his truck, but I could see his truck. Um, <laughs> then he was all like, something's going on, and I'm not part of it, and what's going on? So, we are back. Okay, I'm going to put some uh, tear and tape. This one is bigger, and I know that it's going on the bigger spot, so I can put two strips of it. This one is smaller. Um, and I'm putting it close to the top of the thing, so I'm only putting one on there, but it will be fine. Okay, so this one 
goes. Now, the thing I'm going to caution with as you do this is this card is, you don't want to be hanging your stuff off the edge of the card because you want your card to fit in the envelope. So when you're putting it together, just make sure you're staying on the, within the parameters of the card. The same as being too high up. Like this would look really cute to go like this, but it wouldn't go in the envelope then. And I could do it beforehand, but now I'm about to drop everything. So I'm going to do that. Um, where did I put them? Where did I put them? Right here. So if you want to know how much play you have, which most of the time is not a lot, but there's your envelope. Hold your card like this <laughs> over top of your envelope. So what you will see here is that you don't have a whole lot of play. You got about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth. On the width, you got about a sixteenth of an inch on either side, but on the here, maybe an eighth of an inch. Or I said that backwards, an eighth on the side, maybe a sixteenth on the top and the bottom. So yeah, keep keep your bits and pieces. <laughs> keep your hands inside the car. Um yeah, keep it contained or it won't fit in the envelope. Now, if you were just making it sit on your desk, then it wouldn't matter. But if you were going to put it in the envelope, yes, keep them contained. Okay, so then we're going to put this on the middle piece. And this is just kind of a layer of sand. It's got a bit dark color, darker color. Oops, I did it again. Um, and some texture. Gives it a little more extra texture. So I, I don't know if there's a rule to this. Just kind of... Where you want you want to don't put it all the way on the bottom of this one though you won't be able to see it um well you can kind of see it below but i'm putting mine a little higher though because i can do what i want it's my card and i can do what i want okay so now i have my layers right that are now attached to my mountains and valleys and then this card shows what does it show oh it shows a nice little crab peeking out so the, they have the crab on the back layer so he kind of peeks out he's not fully on the front so that's how they did it with that one you know for oh you know what they did oh yes they did look at how cute that is so you can you can um stamp whatever you want on here but they've made little slits in the crab's paw uh paws claws so that if you are paying attention to what you're doing and you notice it, whoa, the crab will hold the sentiment. <laughs> Look how cute that is. It does show the sentiment going over here, but on here it looks like they just stuck this label to his claws. But look, there's little slits in his claws and you can put the sentiment in them. It's adorable. Okay, so I'm gonna stick him uh, and because I, especially now that he's going to hold the sentiment, I don't want him all twisty and turny. So I am putting, and again, I'm just using my own supplies because I buried the other one. Um, I'm just putting two on. If you put one, he'll twist, like he'll what? But I want I want to keep him nice and secure. So I'm going to put two, and I'm going to. Oh my goodness, he's cute. So when the card is flat, he peeks, but when the when the card is open, you can actually see all of him. And then where did I bury the other stuff? <laughs> oh, maybe I oh maybe I got it wrong. I thought they had extra ones, but I see now that this card actually has starfish on it as well. I just missed that in the original one. Now these are small, these aren't gonna be able to get to. Um But if it the smaller they are, the less likely they are to spin. It just tends to be what I find when they're bigger. If you only put one glue dot on the back of something bigger, it kind of tends to like spin around and move around and it doesn't like spin in circles or anything it just sort of moves around oh my goodness this is adorable so we're gonna put our little starfish and our little dude down here at the bottom and then we're gonna put I'm, I'm not gonna stamp right now because with all my disruptions and stuff I've completely lost a track of time and I'm trying not to make this too lengthy but you can stamp whatever you want and I'm just gonna for the sake of this, I should have just left it in there when I had it in there. I'm just going to put this little bit. Oh my god. Look, see? These are adorable. <laughs> okay, so that's card number one, and it's adorable. I'm totally in love with the crab that holds the sentiment. All right. <laughs> Moving on. 
Um, now you could, and there's so many different, like, look at those sediments. I think, so this long one, um, and if, depending what you wanted to write on them, I mean, you could just cut your own strips too, if you don't have enough, but so these two are longer. Um, the one that says, I see bright days ahead and sending an ocean of love. And then these three or that one there, four, I guess, will all fit the one I just put on the crab. And then these two smaller ones fit in here. But you can easily cut more of whatever size square you want and use whatever sentiments. And then what I love about this is there's a starfish and a sun. Do they all, does each card have a sun on it? I don't think it does. I think two out of the three of them do. But these are great for in the inside of the card and for on the envelope if you want. So lots of options. Lots of options. Okay, now, oh, we're, you know what? These are all awesome cards, but I'm definitely saving the one that appeals to me most for last because, oh, do I love those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna take another card base and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you these are easier because I'm gonna start by looking at the diagram and hopefully <laughs> fold it right the first time and not be so challenged. Um, so you know that this is, this is always gonna pop out. This is always gonna fold just the other part so I'm folding down I'm making a mountain then a valley then a mountain then a valley and somehow I did it backwards again <laughs> oh I missed one that's why <laughs> There we go. I'm like, this is not making any sense because I missed one of the score lines. Okay. See, it is easy. It's just, just neat. It's challenged. Okay. So then I'm going to burnish my folds just because it keeps them better. Oops, sorry. It's just one, two. It does, I find, you like you can use your finger, you can use a nail, you can do all sorts of things. But man, this bone folder... And it's a little harder to do on the ones that are folded over, but the more you can put your bone folder over your whole card, the more I find it lays flat. Like this, right? Like this, I don't know. Magic. Okay. So we have the same kind of layout that we did the last time. And then now it's just a matter of what goes where. So we ha this one has an Adirondack chair. It has some blue skies and beach and scenery stuff it's got the brawly that goes on the front we'll just put that there because we're going to put that up first oh my goodness this is adorable this one goes on the front with like i said where you can put the sentiment or put the sentiment on the other one and then beside the chair we have some sunglasses and some flip-flops Oh my goodness, a too, too cute. So according to our little diagram, we're doing the same as last time. We're going to put one strip here. And then it shows in the picture, and I didn't dry fit it, but I'm just going to trust in the picture. You can put it up kind of by the point there, because that hits sort of the point of the card. So we're putting the front on first. Right or wrong is how we're doing it. <laughs> Actually, on the last one, I'll try to remember to do the back first and see if it makes any difference. Something tells me it doesn't because they did all the work for us. If you were designing it yourself and had to cut all the pieces and were figuring out as you went, maybe it'd be easier. But when they do all the work, ooh, easy peasy. So, yes, we're going to pop the sand on the front. And, yeah, see, I put it up here, and it's... I mean, anywhere up that center of the umbrella is going to hit or over here, but it is a little easier to just put it in the one spot where they show it. And then the Adirondack chair. Oops, I guess we should put this back piece on first. This one's going in the back, so I'm going to put... Um, and I'm look, what confused me when I looked at the diagram the last time, and I was like, what did they do? It's because in their diagram or in, like in the instructions, they're showing that they're putting the tape on the card base. Because <laughs> at first I couldn't figure out what piece they were putting it on. Um, 
So they show to put, and look at this, like two little strips with the two little rolls. So they show to put it on the, like at the top of the card base here, which I realize now means I put my other one a little bit too low, but no, it's not there very much. So now I know that this, like for positioning and positioning, put it wherever you want, right? Just keep it within the confines of the envelope. So this one, and I'm going to do it this way on the back side. Mm, yeah, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really gaining anything. I think it's just a preference. So if you, if you found it easier to put the tear and tape on here, I would think before you folded it, if you wanted to put the tear and tape here, then you could. Um, and looking at it now, I can just look, I've got it flat if that's easier to see. So I'm, because when I measure, either way I measure it, this is going down all the way in. So I don't really know if it matters. Because then when you fold it, we're still within the, within the envelope. Now, what I'm going to suggest, because I seem to be having a slight fold issue, is when you put the front on, keep it, I had it kind of open, but I would say put the fold, like fold it, because this was kind of buckling a bit. It's a little bit better now. But yeah, maybe kind of keep it folded when you put the very front one on, because we're securing the two pieces and it's kind of affecting the fold. Look at that. The, the I just noticed it. The umbrella will do it. They actually have this card. If you made it a bit higher, yeah, a bit higher would fit. You could actually line up the horizon. Mine is not going to. Oh, you know what, though? When you do this, it lines up. Oh, ho, ho, clever. Clever, clever. Okay. Um, yep. Um, like I said, I never looked at this kit beforehand. I'm just winging it and figuring it out with you because it's fun that way and because that's how I roll. Okay, so we're putting a little bit of tear and tape just on the, the widest part of the chair. And then I'm just going to kind of do this with my card, squish it a bit. So I can still see what I'm doing. I think this chair is actually, oh no it isn't. I just want to see more of my chair. I think this chair is actually stuck to the back layer. It is not stuck to the middle layer as I thought. Because there's no way, according to the way their card is done, that you would see this much of it. Because the back layer is very low. <laughs> so if I go down to where they showed me to put the tear and tape, then my chair is like way buried. So we're actually sticking the chair to the back layer. So a bit of trial and error. And I'm going to tuck it so that it's a little bit under the jaunty angle under the sun. And so there's my chair is now on the back layer. But it, it, otherwise, yeah, too much of the chair would be buried. Now I do believe that the flip-flops though, which you can see just kind of poking out when the card is folded, are on the back, on the middle layer. So I put my glue dots just at the, just at the bottom, you know, because you can actually see that. Just curious with a busy background, if I hold it really close to the camera, that no. Yeah, it's got too much to focus on. We did figure though, if you could give it less to focus on below you, it'll eventually focus. Anyways, you can see that there's glue dots there. So yeah, if we put those just on the bottom, because then when I, there we go, when I stick them to my, the other thing we figured out is you have to give it time to refocus now when you move stuff back. Don't worry, take your time, camera. It's okay. Um, I don't know who I saw do this the first time. There we go. But somehow dragging your finger down helps it focus. So anyways, there we go. Flip-flops stuck on the middle. And then we're going to put um, our little, our little, um, it's almost like, you know, the no swimming sign or private beach or swim at your own risk or, you know, the little signs you see on the beach. That's almost what I think this is. But in this case, it, it's instructing you to relax. What does the rest of it say? Relax. You deserve it. Okay, so this, um, I put a little bit of tape here. This is going to go here somewhere. And we're going to just place it so we don't bury the whole chair. And then when it's open, you can see more of the chair. 
I like it. So where the uh, sunglasses go, oops, that's the wrong thing, um, would depend on where you put your sign. So if, you put, if you're gonna push the sign in or out, so kind of figure out where your sign's going first. And then I'm putting these on because if not, I'm gonna knock them somewhere. Um, so my sunglasses are gonna go, so they kind of look like they're under the umbrella over here too. And then we just have this, which I'm not putting on right away because um, I haven't stamped it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stamp it because um, most of the other stamps don't fit there. And, I, and the stamp that I would put on that sign would say relax anyway, so I might as well just do this one. It's not like I'm changing my mind. I just got to, I have got all those little pieces in my recycle bin on my desk and now I can't see my blocks behind them. So let's just go with the relax. You deserve it. Um, and so the spot that comes with the kit is daffodil. And it's cute. But I think I want this sign to be darker so it's easier to read. So I'm using Pebbled Path, which is, conveniently enough, the same co color as pole for the umbrella and yes brand new stamp set I really should have inked it up give it a little twist use it on my paper but lucky for me it worked <laughs> so yeah that was that so now you can see that it says relax you deserve it and we will again with the no nails part we'll just peel that off and I'm going to put it right there. Actually, put it up a little. It doesn't even matter because it's just a little sand dune. Um, and then, see, I think I've already knocked one of my seashells somewhere. It's probably on the floor. Never to be seen again. Um, but this one also has a seashell on it. Oh, you know what? There's two of them in that little pile. <laughs> get the thing separated there we go so I'm just gonna put a little glue dot behind it and then it's gonna, it's gonna actually you know what I think I'm gonna tuck it down on the I'm gonna tuck it down on the front of there I don't, at that point very point if, if the if it was along the bottom of the card it wouldn't be as noticeable but well, because I liked it a little higher it's a very noticeable point so I'm putting my little seashell there <gasps> look at that da, 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 da. Oh, loving these cards Okay, so that's awesome card number two. And then the sunset. And, and like I said, they all have these styling little envelopes with the waves and the rainbows and the colors and the pretty. And then we've got our last one. So I'm, I'm trying to get like not the top card because then I'll send all those pieces flying. Okay, <laughs> here goes Tracy. <laughs> once again trying to figure out how to fold it now this time we're going to do it right the first try because i'm not going to miss the one uh, score line that i missed the last time so making a mountain and then a valley and then a mountain oops i keep going off the screen because i'm trying to see what i'm doing and then a valley and then a mountain. Ta-da! First try. And then we'll give it a nice little burnish there. We'll give these all a burnish at once. And a burnish there. Now, it's not going to ever lay flat, I don't think, because that's a lot of cardstock folded up in there. That rascal has come to help. Yay. So, yeah, it's not all going to fit in there, but... So then this one has these awesome palm trees in the front. It has a sailboat in the middle and it has, just, oh, there we go, our little sunset island in the background. So as I remembered to do, I'm going to go from the back out and see if it makes any difference. Just, I love the sunset colors. I love the bold colors in here. Just 
beautiful. What does this one say? This one says, what did they put on this one? Let me, sending you oceans of love. And it does make sense. So I never, like I said, I never use this one on here. I could have easily put it there. Um, but it does make sense that this card, like they placed it, so it, it kind of has to do with where you place it. This sentiment they put on the front. The other one they put like this, although this could fit back here. So you could have the longer one in the crab claws. And then with the sign, um, it only, I mean, there's only a couple of different sentiments fit here. But if it put, um, like you, I guess you could put wish you were here. And then if you shifted things a little bit, you could put one on the front, right? So you could probably make it work for different sentiments. Oh my God, I love these cards. Okay. <laughs> I'll get back to my focus here. So, I'm going to take these bits off and put this back on the back of the card. And this one seems tall to me. I don't know if it is, but I'm doing it. This time I'm going to purposely line it up and see what happens. There we go. <gasps> Look at that sunset. It's awesome. Then we have our sailboat. Um, I'm not as worried about one strip of tear and tape versus two strips because it's a long strip and uh, things with tear and tape don't generally move. <laughs> That's the whole, the whole point. And if you make a mistake, they don't generally move. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. We'll put our sailboat in. And then, oops, <laughs> how do I drop it? Yeah, see, in this one, because this has just got the smaller front, that's why the sentiment is is going across. And this one shows, too. Like I said, you could be using glue dots, but I'm just using chunks of tear and tape. Um, that's why the sentiment, the longer one, is going across the front of this card, because the trees on the front are shorter. They're not covering as much, so the sentiment's going to cover some of it. And then this is just jauntily in the corner. Oh, you know what I just realized as I looked at that picture? I didn't put any um, any of the embellishments on any of them. So if I'm going to put this in the corner here. I'll just like that. Oh my god, I love these cards. Okay. So I get... There's, maybe there is extra seashell. I don't know. I'm, I Once I made these, I do think there's extra. Nope, those are from the other cards. I was like, I do have six, but that's because I never moved them over to the other card. So I guess in this one, you're going to want to decide which stamp or which sentiment you're putting on it. So if you are putting this sentiment here, it is going to take, depending how much of the grass you cover, it's going to take most of the front of this card. So if you've got your cutesy little things, I would suggest putting them like they show you over there um, and then this goes here now because this is the front of a card the card I would put a strip like they show in here the I'd put the strip of tear and tape on here after you stamp it and like fasten it down strong I wouldn't um, necessarily put uh, dimensional or anything because when when people open it and they're playing they're gonna be touching this little piece this is like the main part you're gonna probably grab on the card so yeah I would make sure that's good and secure for your sentiment oh my goodness I love these cards okay so this is what's going to go on afterwards when I decide what it's going to say and stamp it and now I'm going to do a little excavating there we go let's see what I did with the embellishments there we go and we'll get our metal take your pick tool out did you see my video for the take your pick tool I did on Friday's project and parade because it this thing is awesome and it's got new attachments for it and I was all excited about the new attachments and what I had figured out with the reveal strips. Um, well, I see now that I've obviously started to trend. I'm going to take full credit for it, though, even though they plan these things well in advance, I'm sure. Um, for demonstrators, I don't actually know if it is for customers. I know for demonstrators. Um, they've started a new series where on Wednesday afternoons they pick a product and, you know, tell you the features and show you all about it. Guess which one they're doing tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. I started to trend. Okay. So, if you look on the instructions, you're always wondering, because some people like to go to town with the embellishments. Um, it tells you how many are 
um, allocated. That's my big fancy word I was looking for for each card, right? So here it shows you three embellishments. And if you look at the card, it shows you where they put them. But this way, and I'm pretty sure it's three on each. Yeah, I totally missed it on that one when I was looking at it. So this one shows three and it shows them there, there, and one over there. And yes, this one also shows you three. And it's got... So, if you decide one card doesn't need embellishments and you want to put six on another one, there you go. But if you're doing the math, <laughs> what they've given you is three per card. So, <clears throat> and these are just um, clear. I, I first I thought they might be like little shells, but you know how glass, how glass, how sand is always got like little shinier bits in it than other pieces, right? Like it just there's little bits and pieces that are a little more shimmery, little. Um, that's basically what I think this is meant to to look like. Just the little shimmery bits in the glass, or in the sand. And it just adds a nice little, a little something something, if you're the person seeing it. Um, it's good chance it's not actually gonna show when I try to hold it up close in a second. But it will, um, you can definitely see them in person and they're, they're cute shiny little bits. I like, sorry, I had, to, I had to refold that. I liked where they had them for the, for the surfboard. And I was like, where did they have them? I remember, thinking, oh, I like that. And then I forgot it just as quickly. Um, and I do, I like things in threes. So conveniently enough, there's three. And then just kinda, so this is one little grouping of three, and then, a, you know, but there's three total. So there we go. There are three awesome, fun-filled summary cards. Now my brother and his wife and all her family live in Florida. So you know who's getting Floridian birthday cards or just people you know that just absolutely love the beach. I think these would make great retirement cards too, right? Relax, you deserve it. Then you can just write happy retirement on it. Um, you can write on the back of these. Oops, I guess I could have showed you that too. And this one has the same bit. Um, if you were going to write right on the card, would it be easier to write before you folded it? Absolutely. Can you do it after you folded it? Yep, I think you probably could actually, they're pretty. The other option you have is just to um, take a piece of paper, fold it and stick it inside the card or just like up against the back or something and put it in the envelope with it. Cause just look how adorable those cards are. It doesn't matter if you can write easily in the front or not. Oh, I love these cards. Ta-da! And just let's pretend that I actually put a sentiment on this one down the front. Let's see if that'll hold at all. Ta-da! <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> all right. Well, there we go. So remember, um, it's Wednesday, <laughs> despite what it is actually in reality for me today. It's Wednesday. The stamp sale is going on today. It's a one-day sale. So if you would like to get any of the stamps in the annual catalog for 15% off, let me know by nine o'clock tonight or go to the link that I would have posted for you yesterday, for me today, in my Facebook page um, where you can order drink straight from the online store. But the prices will only show up as being on sale Wednesday, 1130, 1135, whatever time they end it, 1159 it might be. Um, the It'll revert to the regular prices, so make sure you do it before bed, not after. That's what's up Wednesday, folks. Thanks for joining me. This was fun. Loving the cards. And um, have a great, great week. And we will be back here on Friday. Um, I've already decided what I'm doing, and all of a sudden now I've forgotten what I'm doing. Oh, yep. Trucking along. We'll be trucking along on Friday. See you then. Thanks. Bye.